The Tegu is sleeping. I have 25 tarantulas. It's the world's longest snake. Here is my chameleon. This leopard gecko is super cute. Just look at that face. There we go. It already grabbed it. Okay, there we go. She got it. I basically have every tarantula that exists. The worm was basically ripped in half <laughs> almost immediately. Alright guys, so in this video, I'm going to be feeding all my pets. I have 25 tarantulas, 4 scorpions, a vinegaroon, some people say vinegaroon, I'm not really sure how you say it. Uh, I have an Argentine tegu, I have a reticulated python, a carpet python, and a Kenyan sand boa. And we're going to start with these 10 cages right here. Uh, I have a few tarantulas, I have a few scorpions here, and right here I have a Kenyan sand boa. And uh, we're gonna start off with the Mexican red knee tarantula. All right, so here's my Mexican red knee tarantula. I'm gonna go ahead and open her cage. I've had this tarantula for a long time, maybe like three years now. Uh, I raised her since she was a tiny little baby, the size of a dime, this big. And now look how big she is. I mean, she grew a lot. Uh, I'm not sure if she's gonna eat today, but uh, I have some super worms here and uh, I'm gonna be feeding her. Let's see if she's hungry. I'll take super worm, drop it in. Oh, she almost got it. Oh, okay, there you go, she got it. <laughs> For a second I thought she wasn't gonna eat, but she did. She's a, she's always been a good eater. Uh, super worms are good for feeding them. She also eats dubia roaches, crickets. I even gave her a horn worm once. Horn worms are the blue worms that get really big but this spider is just very beautiful uh she's one of my favorites and actually this was the third tarantula i ever owned my first tarantula was a chilean rose hair that you'll see later in the video and uh, my second was a pink toe tarantula and i unfortunately don't have the pink toe anymore but uh the rose hair is 13 years old all right so let's move on to another animal all right, so moving on from the Mexican red knee, we have the Mexican fire leg tarantula. And this is also a beautiful tarantula. And uh, I happen to have two of them. Here we can get a close up of her. And this is what tarantulas normally do. Nothing. They just sit there all day. They're kind of like pet rocks. But once it's time to feed them, it's really cool to watch them. The colors are amazing. Now this is actually a male. My female is still in the reptile room. I didn't bring her out with these cages. But uh, let's go ahead, grab a super worm, and see if he's hungry. I don't think he's gonna eat. Oh, there we go. I actually did eat. All right, so let's get a close up. We could see uh, the worm was basically ripped in half <laughs> almost immediately. The fangs on this thing uh, are pretty big, but this is a beautiful spider. I can't wait to be able to breed them soon, once they both mature. Alright, so let's move on to the next spider. Alright, so here is my Texas brown tarantula. I'm not sure if this one's going to eat, but we'll see. There's a 50-50 chance. Last time I fed this one, I think she turned it down, but we'll see. Oh, I dropped that one a little too far away. I don't think she's feeling it. Alright, but... Oh, okay. She feels it, and she grabbed it right there. But she's falling into the water bowl. Alright, there we go. She's fine. This really isn't one of my favorite tarantulas, just because, like, their colors are a little bit bland. Uh, there's a lot more brightly colored tarantulas that are much more interesting than this. But these make pretty good starter tarantulas. Now let's move on to the next animal. Alright, so here we have a vinegaroon. Some people call them vinegaroons. I'm not really sure what the correct pronunciation is, but uh, we're going to be feeding here a super worm. Now, this is a female who was actually pregnant before. Uh, she did lay an egg sac for me, but unfortunately, she ended up eating that egg sac. Oh, she feels the worm, but is not grabbing it. Am I going to have to help her? 
Oh, oh, okay, she just grabbed my tongs. She grabbed my tongs. All right, let's put it back. Okay, there we go, she got it. And she is missing her tail, and it's my opinion that she lost that tail due to the stress of mating. Uh, Vinegrooms, vinegrooms tend to have a long tail right here. That's why there's a tailless whip scorpion, and there's a whip scorpion. I used to have a tailless whip scorpion. I don't have it anymore, but uh, this is a whip scorpion, vinegaroon, vinegaroon. They have a ton of names. Let's move on to the next animal. Now, I am almost 100% sure that this spider won't eat. She tends to be a little bit picky, but uh, we'll see. I doubt she's going to eat. Oh, never mind. <laughs> this one always refuses food. Now that I'm filming it, she does take it. I guess that's a good thing, though. Her colors are beautiful. It's a Costa Rican tiger rump tarantula. I love the colors on this one. And she is a female. If I get a male, I will breed them, but uh, we'll see. It's not my primary focus right now. Let's move on to the next animal. All right, so right here we have a emperor scorpion, and right here we have another emperor scorpion. Emperor scorpions are the largest scorpions in the world. They're very hard to find. Now the importation has been banned. I was lucky enough to get these captive bred individuals, and hopefully, if they're male and female, in a few years I'll be able to breed them. And these guys are gonna get huge. Now I'm not gonna be feeding them right now, uh, actually, that one I will feed, but this one I won't feed. Right here, there is my flat rock scorpion. Let's see if she's going to eat. I, nah, she never wants to eat. Let's see. I mean, she might. I thought she was pregnant, but it turns out she's not. If she doesn't eat it, I'm going to have to take it out. Yeah, she's not going to eat. Alright, that one's not going to eat. This one will probably eat. All right, there we go. And it's already eating. All right, so for those of you who don't know, right here I have a black light, or a UV light, ultraviolet. Uh, scorpions actually glow blue or green. It's a bluish green, kind of a mixture of both. But uh, they glow under this type of light. See, I'm holding right here. It shines purple. But you see the scorpion clearly is blue. Here with the flat rock scorpion, it's the same thing. See, they turn a different color. Now, I mean, Let's say if we grab a tarantula right here, see there's no color changes taking place. But with the scorpion, you can see them so clearly with this black light, ultraviolet light. This one is a good eater. The other two over here, they're not so good. I have an Asian forest scorpion right here, and that's what we're going to look at next. I thought we'd be able to get a good look at the Asian forest scorpion, but it's right there under the leaves. So... I think we're going to have to skip this one for this video. But you can check it out in my other Feeding All My Animals video. This one is in there. And even in my Reptile Room videos, that one is in there. So now let's move on to another group of animals. Okay, so here uh, I have more tarantulas. All of these are in Critter Keeper cages. I like collecting all the tops of the colors of Critter Keeper cages. I have more downstairs. I mean, I bought a bunch of these Critter Keeper cages. I think they work really well for tarantulas, but not lizards. There are a few small snake species that I would keep in critter keepers, but tarantulas and scorpions do very good in critter keeper cages. So right here we have, uh, what's this tarantula called? This is the curly hair tarantula. Right here we have a chili and rose hair tarantula. Right here we have, what is this? Oh, this is a bird eater tarantula. It's the salmon pink bird eater. I have three of them. Right here we have a Mexican fire leg, cobalt blues, other bird eaters, zebra tarantulas. I have, I basically have every tarantula that exists. <laughs> All right, so now let's get a close up of this uh, curly hair tarantula. I mean, it's a little bit fast, so I might have to cut the video, but no, okay, come on, let's go, come closer. This tarantula is beautiful. Um, doesn't do much, just like every other tarantula that I own, but she is a good eater. So let's feed her right here. Let's get closer on the feeding. 
Alright, and once I drop this worm, it's gonna go right into her fangs. Oh! She did feel it, and there we go. She ate. This curly haired tarantula is beautiful. It looks like a little chick because it's so furry. And uh, in comparison to the chili and rose haired tarantula, which is right here, you're gonna see that it's not as furry as this one is. So if you like furry tarantulas and you're a beginner, this one's perfect for you. Alright, so here is my rose haired tarantula. This tarantula is 13 years old. It's the first tarantula I ever got, and I got it when she was eight years old from a friend, but now this one is the curly hair. You can see how much more hair it has than the chili and rose hair. Now this one does have a pinkish tone to its hair, like on its carapace right there. You can kind of see it, and that's why it's called the rose hair tarantula. Now, let's see if I can get one of these worms. I think I'm just gonna use my hands for this one. It's not really a big deal. All right, let's see if she's hungry. I don't think she's gonna eat. No, she doesn't wanna eat. All right. Or maybe she does. No, she's, go she's already going into a threat posture. Once these legs come up, uh, basically you don't wanna mess with the tarantula. Uh, yeah, she's not happy. Oh, yeah, she's not happy. So we'll move on to the next one uh, A lot of you guys might be freaking out over me having two tarantulas open at the same time But this is under control this tarantula is eating um, She's not gonna be jumping into this one's cage and this one isn't a runner. So they're both fine here All right, so here's my bird eater tarantula. This one's a little bit crazy. So I'm gonna feed it right now There we go I did not want her to jump out of the cage. This one would jump. This is one of those situations where I would not have other cages open because this one's really fast. And she does need a bigger cage. I'm aware of that. This one specifically. But the other ones are in good cages. So she grew really fast. Uh, most of my Brazilian bird eater tarantulas grow fast. They're awesome spiders. All right, let me close this before she comes out. All right, so in this cage, we have a green bottle blue tarantula. This is one of the most beautiful tarantulas in the world. Um, they like a dry substrate, and their feeding response is typically pretty good. So let's see if she eats. Oh, there we go. I got scared for a second. But here you can see those beautiful blue colors that it has. And then the orange uh, abdomen is also beautiful. I have two of these guys, so... Later on in the video, uh, you're going to see me feed it. Alright, so right here we have my other Mexican fire leg tarantula. This is a female, and I'm going to be feeding it the superworm. These Mexican fire leg tarantulas are great eaters. I mean, and they're beautiful too. What's not to like about them? Alright, they're simple to take care of. Tarantulas make great pets. Um, I don't recommend the species that are more venomous, like the... P metallicas and all that stuff for beginners, but once you know a little bit more about tarantulas, um, it's okay to get into the higher ones. There's nothing that's too, too dangerous. Um, whereas in centipedes, centipedes are much more dangerous, and we'll be seeing those shortly in the video. Alright, so right here I have my Brazilian white striped bird eater. Her abdomen is pretty large right now, and I think she might molt. So, I, there's a small chance that she's going to eat this, but we'll see. If she's hungry, she will eat. Uh, no, I don't think she's hungry. No, nah, she would have came out by now. Alright, we're going to move on to the next one. Alright, so this one's a little bit hard to film. My hand's a little bit shaky because of the angle that it's in. She's hiding under this leaf. I'm not sure if he's going to eat, but let's see. I'm going to drop a cricket in. I mean, a worm. <laughs> this one happens to be very venomous, so... Okay, then there we go. I actually got a decent shot of this one. I wasn't expecting it to be so up close, but uh, this is a beautiful spider. I got it from one of my friends named Haley. Uh, she actually named this spider Starless. Uh, I don't name most of my pets. But uh, 
this one does have a name. Alright, let's move on to the next spider. Okay, so here's my other green bottle blue tarantula. Uh, this one does not want to be bothered right now. And uh, I'm not going to be able to feed it, but here it is. Just wanted to show you guys. And uh, we'll move on to the next spider. Now this one's going to be a little bit hard to get a good shot of. But uh, this is my orange baboon tarantula. The actual spider is right there somewhere. But you can barely see it because it's under the leaves. Now this right here is called a molt. And the molt is a tarantula's shed. Uh, tarantula shed just like a snake would. They take off their whole exoskeleton. And it's basically a copy of the tarantula itself. Now, if I were to be filming this with flash, you would see some iridescence right there on the tip of its leg. But um, I have another one of these, and that's the one that I'm going to be able to feed well. Because this one is hard to see. You guys won't be able to appreciate the true beauty of this spider. So, I'm going to be bringing that one in the next batch of animals. But for now, this batch right here that I've been filming is now done, and we're going to move on to the next batch. Alright, so I wanted to let you guys know that I opened a P.O. box. I'm going to have the P.O. box in the description and right here in the video. So you guys can send me stuff. I would love to read whatever you guys send me. And maybe I'll even write back to some of you. So now let's get on with the video. Alright guys, so here is my chameleon named Rango. Uh, I'm not going to be feeding him in this video because he does not like to be watched uh, as he eats. He needs to be left alone. Uh, he gets stressed out very easily. I know if you watch my reptile room videos, uh, you can see Oscar try to bite me a lot. See, he's already trying to bite. Let's see you come over here. Uh, he's just a very stressed out animal, but um, his colors are beautiful. His head is beautiful. Uh, I raised him up since he was a tiny little baby. And there you can see his eyes going all over the place. Um, they can move in all different types of angles. They can look straight back two different directions at once. These chameleons are amazing little animals. And uh, let's move on to the next animal. All right, so here we have my smaller tarantulas and my most expensive tarantulas, my rarest tarantulas. Uh, we have some, we have one bird eater. It's a salmon pink bird eater. Uh, Mexican red rock, Chaco golden knee. These aren't really too rare, but over here we have my P metallicas, which is the goody sapphire ornamental tarantula, a critically endangered species that I'm trying to breed. And right here we have a golden blue leg baboon tarantula, which is the most expensive tarantula in my collection. And I have a few other spiders here, such as the blue fang. Uh, it's a pink spider with blue fangs. They're really awesome. I'll show you guys in one second. And uh, I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to feed them. But uh, first, let's get into these three over here. All right, so here's the Mexican red rump tarantula. I'm not sure if he's going to eat, but I'll drop a little wax worm in there. Oh, whoa, she already got it. That was faster than I thought. All right, so wax worms are worms, uh, feeder worms, but they have a lot of fat content in them. So people don't like to feed them too much. That's why I feed super worms. Well, really, I feed a variety of worms. I feed the wax worms, super worms, horn worms, and then crickets, dubias. There's so many different types of feeder insects that you can feed. But for these little tarantulas, I do like feeding wax worms. All right, so here I have a Brazilian bird eater tarantula. It's uh, one of my three. The biggest one is still to come. You guys will see it soon. This is the smallest one I have, and I'm going to be feeding a wax, uh, not a wax worm, a super worm. And yeah, these tend to be very good eaters. They grow really fast and they are actually very good for beginners. So now let's move on to the next spider. All right, so right here we have a Chaco Golden knee Tarantula. These get pretty big, uh, maybe about seven inches long. They tend to be pretty tame and they're also a good beginner species. I'm going to be feeding it a wax worm right now and uh, we'll see how it reacts. It's so cool how they just grab it immediately like ah, it's so fast it's crazy all right so now let's move on to the next spider all right so in this little cork bark this little round cork bark we have an h maculata which is the togo starburst baboon tarantula but unfortunately i can't film it because it's all the way down in the hole and uh, i just can't get light in there so there's no way to see it but i'm going to post a picture of it right 
in the screen right now so you guys can see what it looks like and let's move on to the next tarantula all right so here's my most expensive tarantula it's the golden blue leg baboon tarantula let's see if he wants to eat a waxworm today oh i might have put that a little bit too far away from him let me bring it closer when that waxworm starts moving he's going to feel the vibration and then he's going to go straight for it oh okay he's just angry now oh wait maybe you might get it there we go all right so he actually did eat this tarantula is super beautiful and um i mean that's all i have to say about it let's move on to my next spider all right so this is a trinidad olive tarantula scientific name is h insay he's right there these are pretty uh good webbers i'm gonna drop the uh, uh wax worm right in there and it got it right there immediately all right these guys are really cool to watch web sometimes at night i'll come and i'll see his cage and he's just over here doing all this webbing it's really cool to watch all right so let's move on to the next spider the next spider is right here it's nothing special it's actually something i found in my backyard it's a little grass spider and these guys make surprising webs like outside i'll see them and sometimes i'll go around and feed them um i have a video on my youtube channel of me feeding this spider in my backyard it's in the backyard bugs series uh, I might be doing more of those videos soon, so stay tuned. But if you want to see me feed this one, go watch that Backyard Bugs video. Let's move on to the next spiders. Here is my favorite tarantula species. It is a P. metallica, the Goody Sapphire Ornamental Tarantula. Now this one's a little bit stressed out in the corner over here because I've been moving the cage. And uh, my other one is in here somewhere down there. But um... I'm not going to be feeding it a worm. Instead, what I'm going to do is throw in one of these cocoons. And I'm going to put the cocoon right there. Now, soon, that cocoon will emerge with a moth. And the moth will be eaten by the spider. In the wild, P. metallica eat flying insects, mostly. And uh, this mimics the wild for them in captivity. And uh, I do feed them worms sometimes and they do eat pretty well crickets everything fine but just to give them more variety i do like to throw in the moths let's move on to the next spider all right so here's the pink spider i was talking about earlier this is a blue fang tarantula i think they lose that pink color as they get bigger but uh the blue fangs are incredible when you're able to see them right now here you can see some iridescence on the tip of its legs but the blue fangs are pretty much hidden right now. Uh, she's got a nice little enclosure, a lot of places to hide. And I'm not going to be feeding her in this video. But maybe in my last feeding, feeding all my tarantulas. There, in that video, you could definitely see this one eat. Uh, I post a ton of videos, and this one is in a lot of them. So if you want to see this one eat, go check out those videos. Okay, so... Right here, I have the meanest animals in my collection and also the nicest animals in my collection. Uh, over here, we have millipedes. They're bumblebee millipedes. Right here, we have the most venomous animal in my whole collection. Uh, and actually, one thing I want to add, when I say collection, I don't mean it in a bad way. A lot of people in the comments don't like it when I call all my animals a collection. But uh, there's just nothing else I can call it. I mean, I googled the definition of zoo and it said a collection of animals. So I'm just going to call it a collection. Uh, right here is my Vietnamese centipede. It's about 9 inches long. Uh, it eats a bunch of crazy bugs and even little mice. But uh, I'm not going to feed it that stuff in this video. I'll talk about it more later. Right here we have an orange baboon tarantula. And this was on Business Insider for its iridescence. Uh, the tips of its legs are iridescent and it's super mean, super venomous, just like the centipede, but not as venomous as the centipede. Right here I have cockroaches and right here I have exotic cockroaches. So uh, we'll get into that right now and we'll start off with the millipedes. Alright, so right here is the food for my millipedes and my cockroaches. Right here is my millipedes cage. Uh, it's a round cage. They don't climb glass, so I don't need a top. And 
if you look closely, you can see where they all dug. Right there, there's like a bunch of little holes. And this is a bumblebee millipede colony. I don't know if I can find any. Let's see. They might be all underground. Hmm. There's a ton of them, but they do like being deep. Alright, so right here, I found one. But that's not an adult. That's not a mature bumblebee millipede. There's another one there, more there. Okay, here, I found one that's mature. That right there is a mature bumblebee millipede. It takes about two years for these guys to become mature. So if you see any that are like that, that means they are over two years old. Alright, and right here we have some calcium for them to chew on whenever they want. A little bit more right here. Alright, so let's put in some bananas. I'll spread that all around. And actually, I'm going to leave one piece of banana for the centipede over here. Because centipedes actually do like to eat bananas, believe it or not. Uh, most people think they're only carnivorous, but they do eat bananas. And that helps them get a complete diet. Uh, you'll see the centipede down here in a minute. Uh, we're going to put some squash with the millipedes. Oh, we had a little bit of lettuce fall in there too. Uh, I'm actually going to take out one of the pieces of squash and I'm going to put it with the cockroaches over here. We got some apples. One for the millipede and then we'll save these for the cockroaches. I'll drop one in there and then I'll put another one over here. Watermelon. I have seen the cockroaches eat them before. I'll drop one for the millipede and then one for these cockroaches. I wouldn't feed tomatoes to millipedes because I read that they actually are poisonous to them but I will feed it to the cockroaches and the millipedes do like to chew on these spinach leaves and lettuce so I'll just drop that in there for them let me put this lock back on the centipede cage and then we'll look into the centipede right now all right so here's my Vietnamese centipedes cage it's very tall because I don't want this thing to escape. And it's got a locking top sliding lid. So basically this is tall enough to where the centipede can't even climb up. But these guys are escape artists. So you got to be very careful with them. Alright, let me just tilt the cage over. We got the water bowl and the centipede itself is right there. They like to dig down. That's why I made the substrate this deep. And right there's the head. And when... With the head, that's where it bites. Um, they got two big modified legs that they use as fangs. And they're super venomous, super fast. And these are only for experienced keepers. And uh, I've been keeping invertebrates for many years now. And it's only been a while since I've had this certain type of centipede. I've had other centipedes in the past. But this one happens to be very dangerous, so I don't recommend them for the average keeper. Now right here, we have an orange baboon tarantula. Now it's gonna be better if we look at it from the back over here. Right there, you can see the orange baboon tarantula. If you look closely a little bit, you can kind of see the iridescent tips of its legs. And uh, a lot of them do make very nice webs. Both of mine have webbing that's pretty good along their whole cage. At night, you could see him go out and then explore the whole cage. But during the day, he just chills out inside his burrow. And cork bark is very good if you have tarantulas. I mean, the tarantulas use it to the highest extent possible. They go inside, make their burrows in it. Uh, a lot of times, I don't even use hides inside of my tarantulas' cages because I like to watch them make their own burrows and i just placed a piece of cork bark in here and she made her own burrow it's a very cool spider all right so now let's move on to the cockroaches all right so here are my doobie roaches and my madagascar hissing cockroaches so let's get into this i'm going to show you guys what this looks like these are a bunch of baby doobie roaches i've been having success breeding them actually right here there's a Turkestian cockroach. This one's a little bit, this one's a different species. They don't get too big, uh, but they make good feeders for little tarantulas. I'm gonna pick up a female dubia roach right here. 
they don't get as big as the Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Uh, but they make good feeders. There's a bunch of new babies here. Alright, so now I'm going to pick up some Madagascar hissing cockroaches. And these are not normal Madagascar hissing cockroaches. These are actually Halloween Madagascar hissing cockroaches. And they look a little bit different than the normal ones. I'm going to post a picture of the normal one right next to this one. And uh, I don't have any normal ones to show you guys right now. But I have been focusing on these. They have bred for me already. And uh, hopefully in the future I'll be able to produce a lot more of them. Oops. I haven't had too much success with them, but um, soon I will be getting more. Alright, so now let's move on to the next animals. Alright guys, so here is my reticulated python. Uh, it's the world's longest snake. He's about 9 feet long right now. She's super heavy. And she's the biggest snake I have. My carpet python is nothing compared to this. And uh, it's definitely a snake that's only for advanced keepers. Here we can get a closer shot of her. She's definitely beautiful. She was on Business Insider for her iridescence as well. She's so heavy, she leaves me out of breath. And here we have a mega monster snake hook. And that's what I use. I mean, she's heavy. All right, so I'm gonna pick her up one more time using the snake hook. Actually, I might as well not even use the snake hook at this point. Uh, the snake hook is best used for taking her out of the enclosure. But when she's out like this, it's easier to just pick her up with your hands, supporting her body the whole time. And that's just what you need to do to hold a big snake like this. It's definitely not a snake for everyone, but um, if you love them, they make really good pets. <laughs> All right, so now let's move on to the next animal. Okay, so this is my Argentine Tegu's cage. We're gonna be feeding him some chicken neck. And uh, I got this cage design from Underground Reptiles. I basically copied their design because they, uh, they have a whole video dedicated on how to make one of these. It's like 20 minutes long and I followed all their instructions and I made that video. So, we got two. simple you just gotta hide and the water and now you hop in now the tegu is sleeping and I'm gonna have to wake him up but I don't know if he's gonna eat but we'll see he's under here he always sleeps in this side ah oh, there he is all right Let's see if he wants to eat. Yeah, I think he's a little bit hungry. Or maybe not, I don't know. He's super tired. Oh, he's just gonna get it straight from there. And he got a bunch of dirt on it. <laughs> okay, pass me the camera. In the last Feeding All My Animals video, you guys saw him eat some ground turkey. And oh, there's a bee right here. And actually, that reminds me. Argentine tegus are famous for clawing into bees' hives and then stealing honey. So, uh... That bee will do nothing to him. And hopefully it'll do nothing to me either. <laughs> oh, well, I'm just going to leave it there and he's probably going to go in and eat the rest of them. But that's enough for today. He's a big lizard. He's one of my favorite reptiles in the world. And uh, maybe he'll go in for another one. He's just putting his tongue on it. Alright, so I think we're going to move on to the next animal while this one eats. And um, hopefully you guys will see him in... Uh, video that I film soon.
Okay, so here you can see the tegu is actually basking. The sun is out. It's a nice hot day. And the tegu is taking in that sun. He's taking in the UV rays. And this is what he does every day. And I feed him, and he's a happy lizard in his big enclosure. Alright, so this is my English Bull Terrier. His name is Zed. Sit. Good boy. He's a very sweet dog. He's very strong. He weighs about 70 pounds. You can see his round head. Oh, good boy. Alright, so Zed loves to be scratched. And he's a crazy dog. I mean, he runs around all the time. He breaks everything. Oh, and he loves looking at the tegu. But I can't let him do that too much. <laughs> hey, stop. Alright, so here we're gonna feed my jungle carpet python a mouse. Uh, she is a great eater, so as soon as I stick this in, she's gonna grab it. Watch. Here. There we go. It already grabbed it. I mean, it's constricting it with crazy force. I don't really handle this one too much, but she is tame. So if I wanted to hold her, um, I would. And uh, you can actually see me holding her in my April 2017 Reptile Room Tour. She's about five feet long and uh, she's very beautiful. So let's move on to the next animal. All right, so here is Tim, my leopard gecko. Let's see if he wants to eat. Oh, there we go, he already got it. I mean, I think he's hungry. Right now I have four other leopard geckos in my care, or actually three other ones. Tim would be the first of four. Um, I'm taking care of two of my cousin's leopard geckos. Oops, he got onto the tongs. Now he's not letting go. He's the smallest leopard gecko I own. The other three are really big. Let's see if he wants to get it. Oh, that's a good shot. All right, you can see like they just eat it whole. They chew it a little bit and then they'll just swallow it. It's really cool. I think I'm only gonna feed him like, I'll feed him one more time for this for this video since it's such a good shot. Let's see if I can get him to eat another one. There we go, perfect. All right, so now I think I'm gonna move on to Oscar, which is my Bell Albino Leopard Gecko. And uh, he's sleeping right now, but I think he might be hungry, so we'll see. Alright, so I don't know if you guys remember, but, oh, Oscar, come back. I don't know if you guys remember, but um, Oscar bit me not too long ago. He's already running away. This has turned out to be a fail so far. Does he want to eat? The light might be too bright. I know Bella Albino's eyes are sensitive. And uh, I think he wants nothing to do with this light. So unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to skip Oscar's feeding. This is actually my cousin's leopard gecko. Let's see if Lily wants to eat. I have seen her eat inside the cage, but not outside the cage. I don't know if she's gonna be hungry. Let's see if she has the same feeding response as Tim. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Oh, that was a weak little bite, <laughs> but she did eat. I mean, this is a beautiful leopard gecko. You guys can obviously see the coloration. I love the little bit of orange uh, she has on her tail. This leopard gecko is super cute. Just look at that face. All right, now let's feed it again. Let's feed it another cricket. Now, I might, I'm not dusting these right now, but um, if I wasn't filming, I'd probably dust it. Let's see, does she want to eat another one? Maybe a little, oh, yeah, there we go. Just a little tiny bite. So apparently Lily is a gentle eater. Uh, she doesn't really attack uh, the crickets like my leopard geckos do. As I said before, this is my cousin's leopard gecko. It's pretty cool to see how they have different behaviors. Now let's move on to the next one. Alright, so I think this one's name is Lolly. Let's see. 
Oh, look at that face and my tarantulas over there in the back. That's a cool shot. All right, let's bring it back into the light. Lolly has kind of like an underbite. I don't know if this affects feeding, but uh, it is pretty cool to look at. It's so cool how every leopard gecko varies, like their colors, the shape of them. I mean, I find it so interesting. The antenna got in his eye. He wants nothing to do with it. Oh, there we go. A little calm bite, just like Lily. You know what? I think this might be because my cousin feeds the leopard geckos in a dish while I feed mine tongue feeding. This might be like a little new discovery. It's a discovery for me. I don't know if other people knew this, but uh, I think my cousin feeds all the mealworms and stuff inside of a bowl while I feed with these tongs. And uh, that's the reason that these two are so different in the way that they eat. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been me feeding all my animals. Uh, my YouTube channel has a bunch of videos dealing with all my reptiles and pets, and even my dog Zed, there's videos. And uh, if you wanna send me something to my PO box, please do, it's gonna be in the description. And I think I talked about it in the beginning of the video. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, subscribe and like the video. Thank you.